uh, thanks everyone for joining us and thank you uh, Nicholas Du oh, you're going to have to say that for me again. <laughs> de Gauss, de Gauss. And Andrew Parks for joining us uh, to just learn a little bit more about ORC. So I'll hand over to you, Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to, to join this meeting. And uh, yeah, the idea is just to give a broad and general knowledge of ORC Club for all the sailors to see what you can get from it and why. Uh, why ORC Club can be interesting for you. Uh, so to start with, I will just give you a quick comparison of what ORC Club is compared to ORCI and IRC, which are the two big ratings used around Australia. Um, so basically ORC Club, as you have understood, is measured by the sailors or your sail maker or whoever you want, basically. Uh, you don't need to ask an accredited uh, IRC or ORC measure to do it, which is cost effective. Is the number of measurement is slightly smaller than what you have for IRC and a lot smaller than what you need for ORCI. And you don't need to weight the boat, which is something that make it a bit easier or a lot easier, in fact. Uh, in terms of costs, it's quite cost effective, uh, so $90 usually. We have the 50% discount for you for the first um, the first year. It will be back to $90 next year, unfortunately. Um, the calculation is completely open source. So if you think something is wrong with your rating, I wouldn't advise that, but if you have a bit of time, you can go online. Uh, take the PDF with all the explanation on how the calculation is working and you can do it at home. It will take you a while, but you can do it by yourself. Everything is online and everything is available. Uh, that's valid for ORC Club and ORCI. IRC is a secret formula, so nobody knows it except uh, IRC, basically. I don't know it neither. Um, and uh, there is not much input on it. Right. Uh, Rod, your hands up. Have you got a question? Uh, yes, I did have, but I, it was, I said it essentially. Oh, sorry. Yes, I, yeah, yes, we will um, make a copy of If you make the slides available, that'll be great. Thank you. Sure, sorry sure, to sure. No, that's okay. Um, probably one of the reasons uh, why the clubs introduced ORC Club, uh, a few, few boats last year uh, really raised it with us, uh, just as an alternative. As everybody knows, we still going to have our PHS scoring, um, but the ORC club is going to be an additional point score. And Andrew, maybe you can explain a little bit. I mean, you've seen it in a number of clubs, haven't you? Yeah, look, it's it's been used um, by a number of clubs in Sydney over quite a few years. Balmain Sailing Club was one of the first clubs to introduce it. Uh, Royal and Salford Yacht Club use it. And as Nicholas said, it's a very cost-effective way of having a measured rating for the boat. Um, you know, with with ORCI, which is a you know quite a high-end rating rule, uh, the boats are measured. You know, they're they're wandered. They measure every aspect of the boat. So if you have a Beneteau thirty-six point seven, and it's it has a hull file, that hull file can be used for your boat, and then you input your SAR measurements and get a rating. So that's where the cost comes down significantly because they don't have to go through the full measurement process to give your boat a rating. And I think it's, you know, we a lot of people still like PHS and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But some people also like to have a, you know, a measured rating system so they can compare their results with, you know, how the, how the boat is measured. So it's, it's a matter of the two complementing each other. Definitely, um, yeah, definitely. And um, so, yeah, and the good thing with ORC is also that we manage it in Australia. So ORC is providing the software that we have in Australia. We obviously pay them for the software, but apart from that, we manage everything locally. So <coughs> you have done a mistake on your certificate, which happened, and if I have done a mistake on your certificate, which happened, unfortunately, as well, 
uh, I can correct it. You won't have to pay for it. I won't have to pay for it neither. So that makes it a lot easier. Uh, IRC is managed by the Rourke in UK, uh, which is usually a good thing for certain parts because they check a lot of data, which we do also here. Uh, but it makes everything a lot more complicated to, to deal with. Um, so just to give you a bit of history, uh, ORC is something very old. Uh, it was uh, linked to IOR and IMS, uh, and it's still going developing ratings. Uh, it stands for the Offshore Racing Congress. They have currently three ratings, one for super yacht that we don't have here, ORC I, ORC International, and ORC Club. They created ORC Club in 1998, and what's good with ORC Club is that they use the ORC I calculation, so they develop everything for ORC I, which is uh, kind of the top level uh, rating calculation. It's probably hard to beat uh, ORC I currently in terms of accuracy. But uh, ORC Club is an easy version of ORCI. You have still have the accurate calculation, but it's a lot more easier to access it. Uh, so as Andrew said, it, uh, ORC Club is used around Sydney for a while now at uh, Royal Prince Alfred uh, at Balmain Sailing Club. And it's starting to be used in other states. Uh, Southport Yacht Club just joined uh, a few months ago. And uh, we have Blair Gory Yacht Squadron in uh, next to Melbourne, who has joined same a uh, few weeks ago, actually. Oh. Um, so War C Club is quite developing well uh, around the country. The fleet will double this year, probably double again next year, uh, which is a good sign, especially during COVID, because most of the ratings are seeing decrease, uh, not War C Club. Um, and we are trying to push all the states to organize, uh, to have an ORC club category in the state championship. So for New South Wales, what is considered the state championship is sales for Steven, or uh, yeah, something like that, the so for Steven uh, week. Uh, and basically there will be a ORC club category uh, next time it will be run, uh, hopefully next year. Um, so internationally, you have a lot of boats rated, uh, about 10,000 a year with both ORC system, uh, ORC club and ORCI. The big countries for ORC club are in Europe, uh, north of Europe or Mediterranean country like Norway, Netherlands, Italy or Spain, uh, out of Europe. United States is still a big uh, ORC country with 200 boats. Uh, what we have in Australia, so last year we had about 60 boats in ORC club, currently have a bit more than 100. Uh, and under ORCI, we had uh, 130 boats or 40 boats, something like that. Uh, we'll get less this year because there is no offshore racing. So ORCI is not much interest for sailors. Uh, just to show you something that ORC Club is not type forming. So you have some rating where you need to have a boat of one shape if you want to win. Otherwise, there is no way you will win. Uh, with ORC, you can win with basically any kind of boat. You just need to set it up properly. Uh, so just to show you your European Championship, the last one was there was quite a lot of boats. You have everything from the Arcona 340, which is a cruiser, more cruisers and racer, to TP52, and they are all in the top three of their category. And you have a J112, which is a big asymmetric uh, boat, not really usually a rating boat, still you can win with something like that. So basically you can win with everything. You just need to sail it well, try to, and uh, and set it up nicely. Um, just to give you an explanation of how the calculation is working. So I will try to be precise and still uh, 
easy to understand in there, it can get pretty complicated. Uh, so the ORC rating is based on the measurements, which are only rigs and sales measurement and the 3D file of the L. So that's the uh, 3D file, actually one of the boat of the squadron uh, that you have uh, in blue here. And you have all the measurements, like you can see them on the rating uh, on, the, on the right. So from this, we will run a velocity prediction program, which is a VPP. That's what, how the, uh, the rating is calculated. So this program will basically, for each wind speed and each wind angle, try to find the best sails, then calculate the yield of the boat, the drag of the of the hull at this speed, the the drag and the the thrust of the sails at this speed, and from all this, we'll uh, manage to get the speed of the boat at this wind angle and this wind speed, and it will do it for all wind angle and wind speed. So at the at the end, you get a polar like you see you can see at the bottom with uh, wind velocity uh, six knots, for example, wind angle 52 degrees, the boat is supposed to sail at 6.5 knots. Must be a fast one. Um, so that's what the, the rating is doing. It's calculate, calculating a polar of your boat. And then from this polar, we can create as many rating as we want. There is a reason for that of not creating only one number is that some boats are really fast upwind or downwind deep and some boats are really fast reaching but terrible upwind for example. So it's good to have a, a rating that reflects the kind of course you have. So for example, uh, if you go offshore, uh, you will mostly do reaching angles. So you want something that will show if the boat is fast reaching or not. If you do a windward, leeward race in the harbor, you want something with only uh, that will reflect if the boat is fast uh, beating upwind and beating downwind. So that's what ORC is doing. You have two numbers on your rating certificate. You have the windward, leeward number with the time on time, and you have the coastal long distance norm number, which is basically the reaching number. Uh, so from my understanding, the squadron will be using the windward leeward number for the uh, summer series, but they might use another one if they're in another event. So on your rating certificate, that's what you get for those of you who have already their rating certificate. So you get this page uh, with the drawing of the boat. It's a drawing to scale. So if this doesn't look like your boat, something is wrong. Uh, you should see your sales, you will see the sales area, you will see the measurements. That's a good thing to check to make sure that it's the same than what you have on your boat. You will see your polars on the second page. You will see um, a lot of other numbers. You don't need necessarily to dig in all of them. Um, you will need your certificate number, which appears on, appears on the right here. There is one thing to know with a rating certificate, and that's the same for any kind of measured rating. You can have only one rating certificate at the time. You cannot carry many. The reason for that is that we don't want both to have a light wind setup, a strong wind setup, and a medium wind setup, and buy uh, 200 sails and stuff like that. And if you cannot afford it, then you are screwed. So we want only one rating, and you set up your boat for what you think is right and you cannot set it up for thousands of conditions and have many rating certificates at the same time. Um, so there is one exception for that. You can have a short-handed certificate. Some boats are doing short-handed racing. I don't think the squadron will run much short-handed at the moment, but uh, you can carry both a short-handed certificate and a normal certificate at the same time if you don't sail the boat exactly in the same configuration. And the last thing is that you can amend, so modify your certificate as many times as you want, but I will ask you to pay when you amend your certificate. Uh, so it's $45 to amend the certificate. Uh, one little thing, if you have made a mistake, I will correct it for free. If you buy a new sales, I will ask you to amend your, your certificate. 
how do you apply for an ORC club certificate? So I think most of you have got one already, but for those who haven't done it yet, um, you need to get in touch with me. So my email is ratings at saving.org.au. Uh, you will need to give me input on your boat. So basically a good start is to give me your boat name, sail number, and the previous name of the boat. Like this, I can search a different database. I will probably find a, an old writing certificate for your boat that has been measured some time ago. I can use that as a start to get some measurements. A uh, good thing is to have your sails measured. So this, your sail maker can help. Andrew here is a good uh, person to go if you have some questions about that. Um, and then if we still miss some measurement, we'll try to get them from sister ships. So that's what we can do for the weight. For example, if we don't have any input on the weight of your boat, we will search for sister ship which have similar configuration and just go get the weight from them. One last solution is your boat is one design, Ed Scholes, for example, J70, stuff like that. Well, just tell me the name of your boat, your same number, that's enough. The rest of the measurement, I know them because it's one design. So once you have done, once we have all the measurement, you will need to pay the $45 uh, and you will get the rating certificate. It takes usually a couple of days to, to get the rating certificate to you. To you. Uh, check your rating certificate, like everybody's making mistakes. So please check them, uh, make sure that nothing is wrong. If something appears to be weird, just give me a call. We'll see, maybe it's normal, maybe it's not, but that's worth it. And then you will need to send the rating certificate to your club so they know your rating. And you will need to keep me updated if you change something. So even if you are not sure if it has an impact, impact on your rating, tell me when you change something. And a good thing is tell me before you do it. Uh, like this, you won't get a surprise once you have modified something that it actually needs to be measured or weighted or something like that. And you don't have any data and you cannot get them anymore. So that's a mess to get them. So please feel free to give me a call, send me an email when you change something. That's really a good process and make, makes everything easier for everybody. Last thing is that you need to revalidate uh, once a year. So the, this timing is the 1st of July. And I think it's right in the middle of your winter series at the squadron. So what's probably going to uh, happen is that the winter series will be run with uh, last year certificate and then the spring series will be run with the next year certificate. Still you can revalidate on the 1st of July. A um, few more things and that's the fun about ORC and that's where ORC gets above most of the other rating. Uh, you can access all the data. So on the ORC.org website on the top right corner, you have this little gray box called ORC Sailor Services. You can create an account for free. And once you have an account, you can access all the ORC database with all the rating certificates ran since 2010 and even older ones. Uh, so you can check a sister ship, how it's set up. If you want to buy new sales, for example, that's a good process just to have a couple of or the sister ship rating, see if they have a good or bad rating, just to give you some inputs. You can uh, check your competitors, how they are set up, or you can uh, check why those rating certificate if you want to, to, to see how it looks, a big boat. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you can check everything basically on this database. You can access any boat in Australia, in Europe, wherever, wherever you want in the world. And you can get credits and then you need to buy them to get more data on your boat or on another boat. So let me explain what you can get. Uh, so you can get your target speeds. And this, the good news from yesterday is that you will get it for free for the first year because we have just reached an agreement with ORC to get this for free for the new applicant. So only if you didn't add an ORC club certificate before. Uh, so 
this target speed, it's basically what you want to have if you race win world rewards. You want to stick that somewhere on the boat and just have your the guy doing the tactics or the M's man checking this. That's what you want to reach. That's the target speed. Uh, so you have the true win speed, 6 to 20 knots, the apparent win angle up. That's what the apparent win angle you want to reach. And the boat speed upwind. Uh, between 4.8 to 6.7, something like that. So that's for uh, first 36.7, I think. Uh, so that's what you want to, to see upwind when you look at your instrument. You want to see this kind of number. And then you have the true wind spin downwind, the true wind angle, sorry, downwind, and the boat spin downwind. So that's basically the numbers you want to reach when you uh, do a wind world reward course quite a good input when you are not sure where you sit. That's quite helpful. One more thing that you can get, and that's kind of the next level uh, of data, is uh, your polars. So the polar diagram. So that's the polars of uh, quite a big boat, uh, which has many different sails. And the good thing with this is that you can get some ranges for yourself. So if your sail makers haven't provided to, the, to you, from this you can get the range of your sails. Uh, so basically you see the G in blue, you see um, cut zero I think in orange, then you have an asymmetric spinnaker, quite a flat one, and then a symmetric spinnaker in, uh, in green. So if you have this kind of stuff, you can get uh, know which sails you are going to use in which condition or at least which one you are supposed to use in which condition and this you can get it for your boat obviously um, but it costs 50 credits which is about 60 euros uh, last thing that's a question everybody is asking me and everybody is asking the, the sail maker I, I assume andrew has got this question from time to time as well. Um, so how to improve my rating? Well, ORC is very hard to trick. Uh, a lot harder than IRC, for example. So there is no magical solution, no little stuff that you can buy to, to make your rating better or your boat faster. Still, you can do stuff. Uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure your measurements are correct. So Andrew was telling about uh, shrinking sails uh, before. That's one of the reasons. Keep your sails measured every two, three years. I don't know, your sail maker will give you a good input on that, but keep them measured. Uh, they shrink, and that's too bad to have a big sail on your rating and a small sail on your boat. That's not ideal. So, yeah, make sure you check your measurement. Make sure when you change your sails that you check the measurement of the new sales. Uh, so some sales maker are saying that they keep the sale within your measurement of your rating certificate. But what happens most of the time is that the sale is actually smaller than what on the rating certificate. Definitely a good idea to get it measured. Uh, one more thing is crew weight. So I think I told everybody that applied just to be careful with the crew weight. Uh, it's increasing the writing moment of the boat or I assume your crew is on the good side at least on the rail for part of it. Uh, so if you declare a massive crew weight, your rating will be massive as well. So be careful with that. Uh, that's quite an important one. Your sail area, uh, classical issue is that, well, you have a light wind jib that you use uh, twice a year, which is massive, which is nice when you have two knots of wind in the harbor, but the rest of the time it's useless. Mm, might be a good idea to leave it on the shore and just don't put it on your rating. So that's up to you. Try to find the sails that you use really on your boat. Don't put a sail that you don't use, especially if it's a really big one. The small one, we don't see them on the rating, so probably good to have small sails, but massive sails. If you don't use them, that's not a good idea. That's the same with Spinnaker. Don't have massive one if you don't use them. Um, and one more thing is that 
with ORC, you need to declare the asymmetric spinnaker and the symmetric spinnaker. But if you, in general, don't use the asymmetric or don't use the symmetric, it's probably a good idea to declare only one of, the, of them and leave the rest on the, on the shore. Uh, the reason is that your rating will decrease a lot if you have only asymmetric or only symmetric and not both kind of rate of spinnaker. And the last thing, how to improve your rating is to play with what's not measured. So what's not measured, the running rigging. Uh, a stupid example is have a outside sheet if you, if you use it sometime, could make you slightly faster in some condition. That's not measured, that doesn't cost much. That's a good, good thing to have on board if it's useful for your boat. It's also set your boat up to make the maneuver good, to make everything easy, to trim, to to this kind of stuff. That's all the stuff which are not measured and that can make the difference. And then to go slightly further, you can compare your boat with the other boat in the database, see with sister ships, with your competitors, how they are set up. And if you are not sure of the impact of something on your rating, just ask us. We are happy to help, give you some input on how much some sales uh, will change your rating or some stuff will change your rating. And one last thing you can do online is run test certificate for your boat. So you can play with your boat measurement and run a test certificate online. It's not free, but this will give you exactly what the new number is if you change a sale, uh, spin a couple, whatever. That's about it for what I have to tell you. If you have some questions, I'm happy to, to answer whatever you have in terms of questions. Or maybe Andrew or Karen, you have some stuff to add to the presentation. So Nicholas, you talked about weighing the boats. Whereabouts in Sydney could we get a boat weight? So you don't need to weight it, but if you really want to weight your boat, you, you can. Uh, I think Woolish Marina is doing it quite often. Uh, but you don't need to weight your boat for ORC Club. So if you don't want to, just don't do it. We will sort it out. Nicholas, um, how much of a guide is the IRC rating to an ORC, ORC Club rating? Are they pretty similar? Uh, so for normal boats like production boats the number should should be quite similar if you have a massive difference something is wrong on one of the rating uh, then if you start to get weird boats usually the ones that get smashed on the irc so uh, for example uh, offshore uh, sailing boats uh, like uh, all the European solo uh, offshore sailing boats, this kind of wide boat, which are really powerful, they get smashed on the IRC. It won't be the case or not as much on the ORC. So for weird boat, you will start to see difference for uh, the usual production boat, numbers will be similar, not exactly the same, but very similar. Yeah. In the yeah. IRC, I think there's an age is an age aging of the certificate and the ratings basically change as a boat gets to three, five. Correct. So eight, that's the case eight. with ORC as well. Uh, basically we have the age of your boat and the older is your boat, the smaller will get the rating. Say that again. Uh, so we have the launch date of the boat yeah. Uh, that's the same for IRC and ORC. They have nearly the same process there. Uh, every year you will get a slight decrease of your rating because your boat is getting older. Yep. So Rod, I think the big difference between the two rules is uh, because IRC is not a declared rule, they use a thing called hull factor. And the hull factor can really determine the rating of the boat. Whereas OIC is a measured rule <clears throat> and it's far more accurate. So you will see some boats where there'll be quite a discrepancy between the two ratings, but 
my personal view is that ORC is a far more accurate way of measuring the boats because they measure stability, which is a key factor in performance. Well, I recall getting an IRC rating on, on the Dela 41, and we were tied up next to, when it was new, we were tied up next to a Benedo 40. And the guy who did the measuring is sort of pretty well known around the place. And he said, these boats are pretty much the same. But they didn't come in the same under the rating. The Benedo basically <laughs> rated much better. And, um, and they said, well, it's in the whole factor and, and nobody could explain because it's a bit <clears throat> secret. I think the formula, what caused the difference and what to do about it. Uh, yeah, so I will stay politically correct because <laughs> I am also the representative of IRC in Australia, but uh, I would say that what Andrew is saying is very true. So, I've, so, so I have, a, have having had the IRC rating applied the first time and having raced against the Benedo, the same Benedo actually, and understanding how the two boats compared. Uh, I haven't, I, I didn't go back, I didn't stay with IRC sailing. So I'm just interested to see whether ORC actually represents something which might actually offer more potential. So the good thing with ORC is that we can explain everything happening to your rating. So your rating going up, going down. Yeah. We, we need to be able to explain because we have the rule, we have all the calculation. So <coughs> sometimes, since the calculation is still quite complex, sometimes I will need assistance from ORC just to find the little trick in the calculation. But I will be able to explain you why what stuff on your boat has made the difference between your boat and somebody else. Very good. So Rod, without putting Nicholas under undue pressure, <laughs> um, the big difference, the big thing is there are a few facets of the IRC rule that are arbitrary, like hull factor. Um, and if your hull factor is wrong, it's very hard to ever recover. Um, yeah. With ORC, it's a fully measured rule. It's a fully published rule, whether it's ORC Club or ORCI. So you can buy the whole rule. You can buy the program, run your own programs if you're smart enough. So it's a, it's a more sophisticated rule. Um, so yeah, there are some anomalies occasionally in, in IRC ratings where the hull factor might not be quite right or the rig factor might not be determined correctly. And once that has happened, it's quite hard to recover. Um, whereas ORC, because of, you know, you know the Ocean Racing Congress's history for 40 years, is quite well established. It's a more, it is a slightly more sophisticated rule. So yeah, but I get where you're coming from. Yeah. If that half fact is wrong, it's a long, long summer for many, many years. Well, that's the difficulty. And I guess that's, so when you're trying to rate different methods, that's why PHS, I've always raced under PHS. And you know, so things go up and down through the season. Um, but at least you can recover. And if you sail better, consistently better, then you can see it gets harder against your rating, which is fair enough. Uh, but if you're stuck with a rating which you don't feel is quite right, you're really stuck with that. And there's not much you can do, be it a new boat or not. Um, uh, yes. So, Roman Tanoski, you mentioned that there was a penalty for having uh, the choice of an ASO or, or symmetrical cot on your boat. Is it is the penalty because you've got the choice of two or because of the size of one versus the other? And uh, the only time you use an ASO on a squadron course is when, for whatever reason, which is very rare, the uh, race officer gets the course slightly wrong and the ASO pops out of the bag and works extremely well for us. But under normal circumstances, we would run a, a normal kite. So is it the, the fact that you've got a choice of two or is it because one might be bigger than the other? I will just come back here, actually. That would be enough. Uh, so basically, the software is just calculating your polars. 
So it's, the software is really very stupid in the way it's working. It will just calculate the polars. It will see that at certain wind speed or certain wind angle, you are faster with the asymmetric and sometimes you are faster with the symmetric. And if when it calculates the windward, leeward pol uh, polar, you have sometime, you are sometimes faster with the symmetric and sometimes faster with the asymmetric, then you will see a slightly, your rating will be slightly higher than if you have only the symmetric because with the symmetric, you are slightly slow, slower than the asymmetric at some point. Uh, just that's a, like trying to explain it in a easy way. Easy way. Um, yeah, so it's just calculating polar. So if you, if sometimes you are faster with one or the other, then if you remove one of them, you will be slower and the rating will be smaller. That's basically the, the, the process. So it's not a penalty because you have the choice. It's just since you have the choice, sometimes you are faster with one or faster with the other. Thank you. So Nicholas, without putting you under too much pressure, <laughs> um, if you were running a symmetrically set up boat and you had a running spinnaker and a reaching spinnaker, the rating would be better. Is that right? Yeah. So just putting a symmet an asymmetric spinnaker on because you don't have a reaching spinnaker is probably detrimental. Could be. I mean, obviously, in true conditions, if you put an A sail on in the perfect condition, it's faster. But you take that penalty every day or around the course. There's not many perfect conditions. I can tell you, one of the squatty courses. That, that's exactly where the, we start to see who, who is a good sailor and who is not. Uh, it's also about choosing at the beginning of the season what sails you are going to enter in your rating. And might not be a good idea to enter everything because some mm -hmm. of them you don't use them. So definitely if you believe that you don't use your asymmetric and that 90% of the time you only use the asymmetric and if you have to use your asymmetric, well, you will be slightly smaller, slower with the, the symmetric or with just a jib, but you will deal with it. Then for the full season, it's probably better to just register your symmetric spinnaker and not both. That makes sense. And coming back on what Andrew was saying before, uh, like, so you have the L factor for IRC. ORC use the 3D file of the boat, which is something we cannot change, like it's the shape of your boat. But what can happen, and uh, we, uh, ORC is doing a massive job at the moment to, to clean the database, is that some of the 3D files are very old uh, for some very old boat. And sometimes there is uh, some discrepancies in the 3D files. So this can happen. Usually you spot it with the draft of the boat, which gets out of what you would expect. So please check the draft, like with fit, if it's within five centimeter of what you, you have really on your boat, then that's okay. If it's 20 centimeter out, then something is wrong and you definitely need to tell me that something is, is wrong and that means that we don't have the good 3D file for your boat and we will get, uh, we will get the good one. That's a mistake from us, obviously. Um, one thing that just came to me, when we were doing the sail measurement at the squadron a couple of weeks ago, Malcolm came in with his sails from Zigzag and he had a symmetric spinnaker and he also had a far 40 spinnaker that was significantly bigger. And when we were measuring, he said, well, should we measure both sails? And I said, well, how often do you use this sail? And he said, I might use it twice a year. And I said, well, why take the penalty for the whole year if you're going to use it twice a year? Which gets back to what Nicholas is saying. You know, think about the sales you measure because if you're not going to use them all the time, why take the penalty 24-7, 365 days of the year? And if sometimes you are not sure if it's worth or not to use this sale, just tell us what sale you want to use. 
and we will get you the penalties that uh, correspond to the uh, to the bigger sales and you will be able to see the difference and just see if it's worth it or not mm. good point okay well i think if that's it for everybody's questions i'd like to thank nicholas and andrew for joining us tonight and uh, i'm pretty sure every, we've um, actually put out your contact details there nicholas for people to follow up later if they want to so yeah thank you. thanks everybody for joining us and, thanks everyone uh, yep we look forward to seeing more rc boats joining us uh, for the season so, thank you thank very you. much thanks okay. very much Good night. Thank, you. thank you thanks nicholas thanks karen okay right. much appreciate it that's pretty good yep yeah, no, um, thanks for that. Um, very informative. I think I know a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I should go and get the numbers on my J70 and see what I should do. <laughs> but then I'm going to need to get one of those fast, one of those um, things that I can't afford yet. <laughs> Just go <laughs> J70s. They're, they're awesome. I'm, I'm in love. I love the thing. <laughs> and there's no rating. Whoever beats the other guy across the line wins. That's yeah, all. No, I know. That is the only way to go. I... I, I, I that has been one of the things that um, I think has been interesting. Um, yeah, seeing how, how worked up people get about all these different size boats. Give me one design any day. <laughs> no, well, they are, that's, they're your roots. <laughs>